Jacques Cousteau once said, a man carries the gravity of his world on his shoulders. He is bolted to it from within. All he needs to do is sink beneath the surface, and he is free. I've spent majority of my life around the water, the oceans, or, or underneath. I was raised in the water. And with as much passion as I have for the oceans, I share an equal loving for poetry. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I've compiled a list of poems and sonnets written over the last 500 years that represent the ocean and man's love for the sea. Today I spent most of my day diving with my friend Micah. And throughout that, we got some really awesome images that I think you guys would enjoy. So why not pair them with some of the most beautiful words ever written in the English language? John Keats once wrote on the sea, it keeps eternal whisperings around, desolate shores and with its mighty swell, gluts twice 10,000 caverns till the spell of hecate leaves with their old shadowy sound. Often tis in such gentle temper found that scarcely will the smallest shell be moved for days where it from some time fell. When the last winds of heaven were unbound, O ye who have your eyeballs vexed and tired, Feast them upon the wideness of the sea, O ye, whose ears are dinned with uproar rude, or fed too much with cloying melody. Sit ye near some old cavern's mouth and brood, until ye start as if the sea nymphs quiet. Edgar Allan Poe once wrote, To one in paradise, Thou wast all that to me love, For which my soul did pine, A green isle in the sea, Love, a fountain and a shrine, All wreathed with fairy fruits and flowers, And all the flowers were mine. Ah, dream too bright to last, Ah, starry hope, Thus did arise, But to be overcast. A voice from the future cries, On, on, but o'er the past, Dim gulf my spirit hovering lies, mute, motionless, aghast. For alas, alas, with me, the light of life is o'er. No more, no more, no more. Such language holds the solemn sea to the sands upon the shore. Shall bloom the thunder-blasted trees, or stricken eagle soar. And all my days are trances, all my nightly dreams are where thy gray eye glances. And where thy footstep gleams, and what eternal dances, but what eternal streams. William Butler Hughes once said, O world, a world thou choosest not the better part, it is not wisdom to be only wise, and on the inward vision close the eyes, but it is wisdom to believe the heart, Columbus found a world and had no chart, save one that, that faith deciphered in the skies, trust the soul's invincible surmise. With all his science and his only art, our knowledge is a torch of smoky pine that lights the pathway but one step ahead, across a void of mystery and dread. Bid, then, the tender light of faith to shine, by which alone the mortal heart is led unto the thinking of the thought divine. The great Charlotte Mew once wrote, Sea love. Tide be running the great world over. T'was only last June month I mind that we was thinking the toss and the call in the breast of the lover, so everlasting as the sea. Here's the same little fishes that sputter and swim. Why the moon's old glim on the gray wet sand? And him no more to me, no more, no me to him, than the wind going over my hand. John Maysfield once wrote, Sea Fever. 
I must go down to the seas again, to the lonely sea in the sky, and all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by, and the wheels kick and the wind's song and the white sails shaking, and a gray mist on the sea face and a gray dawn breaking. I must go down to the seas again, for the call of running tide is a wild call and a clear call that may not be denied. And all I ask is a windy day with the white clouds flying, and the flung spray and the blown spume and the seagulls crying. I must go down to the seas again, to the vagrant gypsy life, to the gull's way and the whale's way where the wind's like a weddled knife. And all I ask is a merry yarn from a laughing fellow rover, and the quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long trick's over. Edna St. Vincent Millay once wrote, Pity me not. Pity me not because the light of day, at close of day, no longer walks the sky. Pity me not for beauties passed away, from field and thicket as the year goes by. Pity me not the warming of the moon, nor the ebbing tide goes out to sea, nor that a man's desire is hushed so soon that you no longer look, look with love on me. This I have known always, love is no more than the wide blossom which the wind assails, than the great tide and the threads of the shifting shores, strewing fresh wreckage gathered in the gales. Pity me that the heart is slow to learn what the swift mind beholds at every turn. Nathaniel Hawthorne once wrote, The Ocean. The ocean has its silent caves, deep, quiet, and alone. Though there be fury on the waves, beneath them there is none. The awful spirits of the deep hold their communion there, and there are those for whom we weep, the young, the bright, and the fair. Calmly the wearied sea seem in rest beneath their own blue sea. The ocean's solitudes are blessed, for there is purity. The earth has guilt, the earth has care, unquiet as its graves, but peaceful sleep is ever there beneath the dark blue waves. To my children and my grandchildren, remember that there was a time when the powerful and the strong and the elegant men of this world who led the rest of the world were willing to speak, read, write, and recite poetry in its purest forms. It was the utmost height of masculinity. The strength that it takes to read, write, and recite poetry, in my opinion, is the same as it is to dive within and learn the depths of the ocean. The deeper you dive into both of these things, the more vibrant and beautiful the world opens up for you. Never be afraid to write down your feelings. Never be afraid to Step into something you don't know. Never be afraid to learn something new. The ocean has taught me a lot in life. So has poetry. And I just hope that whoever you are and wherever you are in the world, that music and art and literature and nature all come to you with an open mind that you accept all of it with an open heart. Never stop being who you are. Always follow and chase your dreams. Never be afraid to express an emotion, fear, or a life's goal out loud, on paper, or to anyone, including yourself. You'd be amazed the world that is out there beyond what you already know. There will never be a day in your life where you stop learning. Remember that and always look forward. The world and the future is bright for all of you, as long as you're willing to hear, see, and feel what nature, what the oceans, and what literature can actually bring to your heart and your mind. My favorite author, Lord Byron, 
put out a very memorable quote that resonates with me today. There is a pleasure in the pathless woods. There is a rapture on the lonely shore. There is society where none intrudes. By the sea and the music and its roar, I love not man the less, but nature more. Bliss Carmen wrote, Son of the Sea. I was born for deep sea faring. I was bred to put to sea. Stories of my father's daring filled me at my mother's knee. I was sired among the surges. I was cubbed beside the foam. All my heart is in its verges, and the sea wind is my home. All my boyhood from far of an all, born of being and came to me, dreamlike, plungent, and eternal, memories of the plunging sea. I love you all so much, and I hope you enjoyed this little piece of me.